You're listening to Indications by the Conference Board. Welcome to the Conference Board's Indications podcast. Indications is a public podcast featuring our global roster of thought leaders. Topics range from economic growth and competitiveness to human capital, governance, sustainability, and beyond. Each episode is a serious conversation grounded in data and insights that will help keep you ahead of the curve in a turbulent world. I'm here with my colleague, Lynn Franco, Senior Director of Economic Indicators and Surveys at the Conference Board. Welcome, Lynn. It's always great to speak with you. Great to be back, Dana. All right. Well, let's discuss this most recent consumer confidence survey. Consumer confidence dipped in May. It's not too bad, but it's still heading downwards. What's going on with the data? Well, I'd characterize it as a bit of sideways movement that we've been having for the last several months, uh, and I think it's a testament to consumers' resilience. Um, So we've seen a variety of different challenges uh, over the last couple of months. We have the war in Ukraine. We've got uh, prices uh, that continue to climb, especially at the gas pump and food prices. And we've also got interest rate hikes going on. So it's been sort of a challenge for consumers, which they seem to be weathering pretty well. Okay. Well, what about the present situation? What's going on with that? Well, we did see a bit of weakening in the present situation, but uh, the index itself is at 149.6 which is pretty strong. So uh, underneath the sort of the hood, when we look, what we've seen is that consumers rated business conditions a little bit more positively than they had in April, uh, where we saw a little bit of a deterioration was in their assessment of the current labor market. But the good news here is that business conditions tend to lead. So if we continue to see business conditions improve, uh, it will lead to more jobs. And overall, even though uh, the job rating is relatively strong. What about expectations? They are still below 80, which I understand means anything below that level is signaling trouble ahead. Yes. Well, the good news here is that we haven't seen a significant deterioration in the expectations index. We're currently at 77.5. We were at 76.7 in March. Uh, So generally, when we see a recession uh, coming, we tend to see a much more rapid deterioration in the expectations index. So this doesn't seem to be sort of a recession signal. And what consumers are telling us is there is some, you know, cautiousness or apprehension about the uh, business outlook over the next six months. A little bit of an expectation that we'll see a little bit of softening in the labor market. But given how relatively strong uh, the labor market is, I don't think this is sort of a red flag either. And in terms of their income expectations, it was a little bit of mixed news here. So we saw a greater percentage of consumers say that they expected their incomes to increase. Uh, We also saw a few more say that they expected to decrease. But overall, probably enough to at least help us sustain uh, consumer spending and consumer confidence over the next couple of months. When I look at other people's, (laughs) other entities that have uh, consumer confidence measures, their measures have really deteriorated. Meanwhile, ours seem to be okay, and consumers are spending. Last week, retail sales in April were quite robust, even after accounting for inflation, and also people spent on durable goods, non-durable goods, and services. So what's the difference between our measure and potentially some other measures, or what's rather what's unique about our measure? Well, our measure is supported uh, by the labor market. So two out of the five questions are assessments of the labor market. And we know how strong the labor market has been. And that's really supported consumer confidence. Uh, it's uh, The reason for this resiliency that we see that even though we've had a little bit of deterioration, 106.4, the current reading, is a strong reading for consumer confidence. And we're not prone to uh, some of the other surveys, maybe uh, the impacts of inflation, right? So there, I think we've probably seen uh, inflation have too heavy a hand in the confidence measure where under less of an inflationary environment, uh, the measure probably would have come in a bit stronger. I see. So let's talk about buying plans. Are people, are consumers still looking to buy houses and cars and go on vacation and that sort of thing? What are you seeing? 
They are, but not to the degree that we saw earlier this year. Uh, and it's a twofold reason here. So one is, you know, we're seeing a shift or a pivot uh, from goods to services. And that's sort of, you know, part of this uh, pre-pandemic uh, atmosphere that we're in. And also we're seeing the impact of uh, interest rate hikes, right? So that um, now it's a little bit more costly to take on, uh, you know, debt, uh, whether it be in the terms of a purchase of a home or automobile. And with homes in particular, uh, you know, interest rates, uh, you know, mortgages are very interest rate sensitive and we've already seen those ticking up. So I think that's uh, probably keeping a few people on the sidelines waiting to see uh, if things cool off in the longer run. So what have consumers been doing in the face of higher inflation and rising interest rates? And, And do we have any sense of what they plan on doing going forward? Well, I think one thing in particular that we're seeing is they're shifting from durables to services. So we can expect, um, you know, in-person services, I think, to continue to do well. Uh, Again, though, it depends on the particular consumer because we have seen differences between the more affluent consumer and the less affluent consumer. And a consumer who's on a budget right now is being a little harder hit by rising uh, gas prices, rising food prices, a little bit of less discretionary spending there, whereas your more affluent consumer is not being impacted to the same degree. So I think we're going to continue to see, uh, you know, this pivot from durables to services. Okay. What about inflation expectations? So we have our one year ahead inflation expectations measure, and that usually fluctuates with food and energy. Was there any improvement this month or, or was it worse? Well, I think we have a little bit of good news here. So in March, uh, the measure hit 7.9, and it's not a proxy for CPI. So the trend here really is important. Um, And then it's sort of been uh, heading downwards a little bit over the last two months. It was at 7.5 in April, 7.4 in May, still elevated, but it doesn't seem that, um, you know, inflation is, is accelerating. Well, this is super important because indeed the Fed is raising interest rates and really wants to keep inflation expectations anchored. Most of the time they're focused on longer term inflation expectations over the next five to 10 years, but one year inflation expectations are also important to them. So I think this is great news that there's been at least some improvement, even though the gauge is still quite elevated. Just wondering, were there any regional, you mentioned income-based differences, but were there any regional differences that were noteworthy during the month? Uh, Well, I think what's pretty interesting is we did see some sort of changes in the states. Um, And so we've got, I think, a few more uh, losing ground as opposed to gaining ground. And one in particular, for instance, New York, we saw a decline of almost 17 points in consumer confidence. And that could very well be due to the fact that, uh, you know, we're seeing somewhat of a another surge in terms of COVID cases. So that seems to have had a bit of an impact on confidence levels. Still strong, uh, but not as strong as we were in April. Wow, lots to think about here. Um, Everyone's really watching our gauges closely. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the future months will bring us in terms of confidence reading. So thank you so much, Lynn, for for your great insights. You're quite welcome. All right, folks, so this has been Indications from the Conference Board. If you enjoyed this podcast, you may listen to additional The Conference Board offerings by going to our website and looking for podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks again for listening. This has been Indications from the Conference Board.